This has been a challenging time for our community. Throughout the coronavirus pandemic, so much has changed in the way we function and communicate. But there are still important decisions to be made in city government about the response to the pandemic and more. So we wanted to provide an opportunity for elected officials to communicate directly and connect with their constituents. Welcome to Ward Updates, a series of one-on-one -on -one interviews with Ottawa City Councillors. We're going to talk about the issues arising from this crisis that directly affect you, your families, and your neighbours. We'll share the stories of people throughout the city who have been rising to the occasion, and we'll also talk about other important issues that are still on the agenda at Ottawa City Hall. My guest today is Matt Luloff, the City Councillor for Ward 1, Orleans. Matt, welcome. Thanks for having me, and thanks for Rogers. Uh, thanks to Rogers for doing this. This is wonderful. Now, before we go any further, Matt, we've got to talk about the space that you're speaking to us from, uh, because uh, in this pandemic, throughout this pandemic, we've all been on Zoom calls and Microsoft Teams meetings and all of those kinds of things. And one of the unusual elements of this is we get a glimpse into people's homes and uh, you're coming to us from what looks like a music studio in your home. Uh, there are lots of musical instruments and speakers and lots of records there. So just tell us about your space. Sure, Mark. So uh, I'm uh, with you today from my home studio in my basement, which has uh, actually been a, a great workspace uh, throughout the pandemic, uh, obviously because uh, of uh, all the media that I have here. So, uh, you know, I get to counsel in surround sound, so it's almost like I'm there with everybody in their uh, Brady Bunch boxes on the screen in front of me. Uh, it's also quite quiet. So, uh, you know, we've got a, an 11 month old uh, daughter upstairs with my wife and, uh, you know, babies can be quite noisy, but, you know, I'm able to, to close the door and focus on the task. So really uh, not much of a change in our ability uh, to work uh, during this pandemic. Uh, if you've got a, a decent uh, little home office or enclave like this to retreat to. Yeah, I see that as more of a man cave uh, or home studio <laughs> than, a, than a home office, but <laughs> whatever works in these times, right? Yeah. That's right. So tell me a little bit about what's been happening in Orleans during this pandemic, what you've observed, how it's affected you and the people around you. So um, especially during phase one and phase two, I was really impressed with how the community came together. Uh, we've got a wonderful group of, uh, of quilters and sewers uh, led uh, by Geneviève Peixot, who went to work immediately uh, sewing cloth masks uh, for the community for free. Um, so they were getting into all of the community groups, like being neighborly, uh, our, um, our community association groups, and letting people know that uh, we understand that not everybody had access uh, to a mask. And... You know, there was a bit of a, a bit of a conundrum at the beginning where it was like, okay, you have to, you have to buy a cloth face mask, but you have to go to a store to buy a cloth mace, a face mask, but you can't go into that store unless you have a cloth face mask. So these guys are really wonderful, uh, dropping them off to people. Um, so seeing the community come together uh, has been has been absolutely uh, unbelievable. The way that a lot of our local businesses have kind of turned on a dime uh, to. Uh, the online world uh, has really been mind-blowing. Uh, the mayor and I, uh, once we got to phase three, did a little bit of a, a tour of some of our local businesses. And, you know, one of them uh, is this game store, Kessel Run, uh, which is in Centrum uh, in, uh, in Orleans. And so uh, we went in to chat with him and we said, hey, listen, you know, obviously this is a very tactile business. People are picking up, you know, fig figurines to play Dungeons and Dragons or picking up, uh, you know, chess boards and that sort of thing. How did you guys manage? And he said, oh, you know, we, you know, hooked up uh, with uh, with Shopify, went online. Uh, and because, you know, there were people that were at home uh, that were unable to work, uh, people were looking for things to do. And there's only so much Netflix that you can binge. So uh, their business is booming. And as soon as we got to a point uh, where they could move to phase three, uh, they were running uh, youth camps again. Uh, and so now they've not only do they have the one stream uh, of online, but their, their shop is open again, and they've been able to resume some some programming. 
Also, there's been, you know, some frustration with the, with the lack of services or the services that we had to shut down and super glad to see that, uh, you know, the city's super hard at work uh, getting those open again. Um, a lot of consternation about uh, the, the public library uh, and how we had to lock everything down. I'm the chair of the Ottawa Public Library and you know, very proud of the work that uh, our staff has done to, to get moving again. We've got 22 of 33 branches offering services again and 20 of them uh, offering uh, browsing services. So, you know, the way things change in a pandemic like this, people are staying home a lot, so uh, they, they notice things, um, you know, uh, so we've been able to uh, ensure that we're providing uh, really good services when it comes to service requests. So I check in with my team twice a day. We've got four great staff uh, in my ward office. Uh, and, uh, you know, we work, we work hard every single day in the same way that we did before serving the people of Orleans. What are some of the important things that you think people need to consider as we move into the next phase and more and more things open? And at the same time, uh, you know, there, there are going to be changes as the weather gets cooler. Uh, patios won't be as open. Businesses will have to adapt again. So there are a number of different factors that are coming into play. What do you think we need to be thinking about? Well, we need to be extra careful. Um, so with phase one and phase two, we were able to flatten that COVID-19 curve um, relatively quickly and, and easily because we were staying home and we didn't have those interactions with each other. But now that we're in phase three of opening up our economy, we are engaging in riskier activity. Um, and you're right, Mark, uh, winter is coming, as they say on Game of Thrones, and uh, patios are not going to be open in the same way that they are now. So we're gonna be engaging in, in even more risky activity because we're gonna be much closer together. Now you have an option to sit outside or to sit inside. It's not really gonna be an option when it's you know minus 10 or minus 20. So it's super important that we continue to follow uh, Ottawa Public Health guidelines on the wearing of masks and uh, people need to realize that it's my mask that protects you and your mask that protects me. So, you know, to go out and wear a mask with a group of people that are not wearing masks, you yourself are not protected. So it's, it's really important that, uh, that we're following uh, those guidelines. What other messages do you think are important at this time uh, as people go out and engage a little bit more? Some people are returning to workplaces and so on. Uh, of course, schools are open again. Um, and, and also, uh, tell us about, about the testing centers in Orleans and, and the access to testing in your community. Sure. Um, obviously, the return to school uh, is a really tough decision on a lot of families. The Ontario government uh, has provided some options for, for online learning that might not be uh, the right choice for every family, uh, but this is a very personal choice for each family to make. Uh, I know that my nephew is going to be returning to school online only, but that's not an option uh, for some families uh, who uh, you know, are not, don't, that are children that are not of high school age uh, or have to go into work themselves. Um, so we totally understand, uh, you know, how difficult uh, this, this is um, and the need to have greater capacity for testing as we increase uh, more risky behavior when it comes to the transmission of COVID-19. So myself, uh, Tim Tierney, uh, Laura Dudas uh, and Stephen Blay have been working really hard uh, with the president and CEO of the Ottawa Public uh, Hospital, the Ottawa Hospital, um, to bring a testing center to Orleans. We're really glad to see the announcement of a new drive through testing center at RCGT Park. That's going to increase capacity and move some capacity towards the East End, but that's not here in Orleans or on this side of the green belt. So we're going to continue to work with them uh, to ensure that we have uh, a semi-permanent testing site. We know that this pandemic is, is not going away anytime soon. Uh, and so we've been really working hard on that. We've identified, you know, between half a dozen and a dozen sites uh, that seem to be viable. They're in evaluation right now. Uh, and as the MPP has said, uh, we are hoping uh, to have a site locked down and announced uh, by the fall. 
Matt, can you talk a little bit about what services are available to people? You mentioned public library branches. I know a lot of people are wondering about community centers, pools, that sort of thing. And, and it's not just kind of what's open, but what our practices should be, because I think everybody's sort of trying to strike the right balance between living as normal a life as possible and engaging in the community, but also not taking unnecessary risks. So, for example, uh, you know, how do you make a decision about whether to go swimming at a pool, even if it is open, because you don't want to necessarily expose yourself to risk and you don't want to contribute to a problem, but at the same time, you don't want to just stay in your house 24-7 either, right? So we do have some options, uh, which is good. So our city parks, our baseball diamonds, uh, our tennis courts are open. Tennis happens to be a sport uh, that is very low risk uh, because of how far apart you are. It's great for physical distancing and allows, you know, um, for, uh, for us to get some exercise. If you're looking to go for a swim right now, although today uh, as we record this is probably not a great day for it, but Petrie Island is open. Um, so lots of room there to, to physically distance if you want to get in the water. Uh, Bob McQuarrie, the pool has reopened, so you can reserve a swim online, uh, obviously with reduced capacity to allow for physical distancing. So make sure you're paying attention to what's going on around you, as I know everyone does when they're being water safe anyway. Uh, the gym at Bob McQuarrie is open too with reduced capacity. At the Ray L complex, the pool will not reopen. Uh, the way that it's configured doesn't lend itself, uh, you know, to to ensuring physical distance, distancing at all times. However, the gym is open. Uh, we have an ice pad that is in use right now uh, for hockey and figure skating. The Gloucester Skating Club has been able to use that ice pad. Uh, and the second ice pad, one second ice pad is, is to open soon. Uh, a, th a third remains closed. Uh, when it comes to the library, as I mentioned, uh, you know, Cumberland Branch is open uh, to the public for browsing. Uh, 22 of 33 branches are open. Uh, and so in the East End, it's Cumberland and Blackburn. Uh, Cumberland has a much higher capacity. So if you're looking to, to go and browse the collection, uh, Cumberland, we can accommodate 50 browsers. Blackburn, uh, I believe the number is 17. Um, so, you know, if you kind of live in the middle, like in Chapel Hill, I would recommend you visiting the Cumberland branch. Uh, and our client uh, services center uh, at Centrum, uh, we're taking a cautious approach to reopening the city admin buildings. So services uh, right now are offered uh, online at ottawa.ca. Uh, we've been able to accommodate certain exuating circumstances um, and, and open uh, for, for certain cases. But if you need assistance with that, just call my office at 613-580-2471. Uh, what do you think are some of the lasting implications of this crisis? Obviously, there's an impact on city finances, so we could talk a little bit about that and how we recover from that. But do you think it is going to change a lot about our city? Is it going to change the use of public transit permanently, for example? Is it going to change the number of people who go downtown and work there or choose to work at home instead? What, what do you think are some of the uh, fundamental shifts that have occurred because of this? Yeah, these are definitely things that I worry about quite a bit, Mark. Um, so we've seen some of our larger employers and some of our great entrepreneurs like Shopify say, you know, if you're working from home now, uh, consider working from home for the, for the rest of your time with us or for the rest of your career. Um, and they've been really good at enabling uh, that kind of online work. Um, there are some positives that come with working from home, though. Uh, you know, our local restaurants are getting more daytime business. As you can imagine, and, you know, as I said during the campaign, uh, I was working uh, to create work hubs uh, in Orleans so that people didn't have to commute downtown uh, to attract more employment here. Uh, the good thing about the pandemic is that more people are staying home. Uh, it's very difficult to run a restaurant on one sitting a day, so just dinner. Uh, so now we're seeing people that are missing the sort of collaboration, you know, making the choice uh, to, to get together and grab lunch in our community. Um, so that's one positive. Um, the large 
hole uh, in the city's budget. We're anticipating a $192 million hole in our budget. Uh, is mostly due to the shortfall in public transit, because you're right to point out that people have not needed to to go downtown or to go across the city uh, to get to work. Um, I think that uh, that is definitely a long-term implication. If people uh, are changing their habits, their commuting habits, we're going to need to uh, respond to that. Um, and so these are all discussions uh, that we'll be having at the council table and, and kind of behind the scenes, uh, the way that I like to work, uh, to try and, and sort this out. The uh, two, two other orders of government have uh, promised uh, us uh, about $124 million uh, in, in transit funding and other funding to help us kind of close the gap on that bottom line that we're working with right now. Phase two of the provincial funding is going to be based on receipts essentially so uh the um the, the hard impact directly caused by covid 19. Uh, but you know as somebody who likes to be fiscally responsible uh, i i realize that there is only one taxpayer and uh you know i will look for solutions that don't place that burden uh, directly uh, on our residents how are you feeling about light rail in particular? Uh, phase two, of course, is uh, the construction of phase two is underway, uh, but there have been so many issues with phase one. And now, as you just spoke about, I think there there is a change in, in, uh, in behavior that might result from the coronavirus crisis. One element of that is just that people may not travel as much from their homes. They may not go downtown to work or go to other places with the same frequency, but they may also be, even if they are traveling somewhere, reluctant to take public transit because of the risk of infection. So uh, it, that, that, uh, there's a lot to unpack there in that question, but how are you feeling about light rail generally and about phase two, which is bringing it to Orleans? So firstly, uh, we got an update yesterday from Vera Etches who let us know that there have been no outbreaks um, associated with uh, the reopening of bars, patios, restaurants, or public transit. Yes, we have heard uh, that there have been uh, individuals uh, that work for OC Transpo that have contracted the coronavirus, but there has been no indication that that has come uh, from, uh, from our ridership. So that's important to note. I've never minced words about my feelings on the efficiency of phase one of the LRT. It's an important project, but it's one that has been incredibly frustrating. Uh, and one that a lot of us have felt very helpless about. Recently, there was a change in management at uh, Rideau Transit Group and Rideau Transit Maintenance. And for the last, I believe, three weeks now, we have had 15 trains running on time uh, with no major stoppages. That is a good story. But I understand that our ridership is very frustrated with what they went through and are very worried about what the winter looks like. It's tough to be stuck out on a platform at Blair Road, uh, you know, at 6.30 in the morning, not knowing when the next train is gonna be coming. So this is something that we're gonna be paying very close attention to. Um, so very glad to see, uh, you know, 15 trains on the track. That's really great news. I wanna see that uh, for a few months, uh, you know, before I start praising RTG and RTM, you know. Uh, five times bitten, you know, I'm, I'm going to be pretty shy for a while. Uh, work on stage two LRT uh, is progressing really well. Uh, the bulk of the work uh, is focused on Montreal Road and that interchange right now, uh, where new bridges over the 174 are being constructed. Uh, so most of the activity within our ward is still concentrated on utility relocation and culvert work, which is what you're seeing uh, when you drive along the 174 at uh, Champlain. Uh, I noticed a resident uh, is uh, being uh, mailed out or has been mailed out uh, with more details. So, um, you know, if you live in the area, uh, there'll be a dedicated number there for you to call if you have any questions. Uh, there's stormwater drainage work that's being undertaken at the Trim Park and Ride. Uh, it requires temporary closures of some small sections of the parking lot uh, as uh, the work uh, progresses. 
Um, something that I get asked about a lot when it comes to stage two uh, is the noise at night. So during the first few months of COVID-19, when the traffic levels were dropped, I encouraged the contractor to complete work that they were going to do at night during the day because there just wasn't the same sort of volume. Um, so there was a noise exemption bylaw that was granted until September 30th. Uh, I demanded that there would be no tailgate slamming, no uh, uh, regular backup alarms. I wanted to hear broadband backup alarms, which is the one that sounds like a swoosh and kind of dissipates. It's very directional and doesn't you know, bounce around the neighborhood. Uh, assume that residents have their windows open and are trying to sleep, especially during these cooler nights, uh, and not to idle vehicles that are not in use. So I'm going to continue to make sure that these conditions are required uh, for any exemptions uh, to the bylaw. Uh, sorry, do you have confidence that when phase two opens and brings light rail to Orleans that that it's going to be a properly functioning service or is there a risk that the issues that we've seen with phase one could just be compounded by the additional track and, and uh, the, the extended service? That's a great question and we have a completely different contractor working on the tracks from Blair Road uh, all the way out to Trim Road. Uh, Europa, uh, Vinci, uh, and Qit have been absolutely incredible. They have an internationally uh, recognized reputation. Uh, we've been very pleased uh, with the responses that they've given us to, to our questions uh, and to the quality of work that we've seen. Uh, I've also received some comments from, from local experts and, 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 and transit uh, workers that have seen the work that they've been doing. They're incredibly impressed with the speed uh, of which uh, the, uh, the flyover is being built at Blair Road, uh, the widening uh, and, and, and movement of the 174 to accommodate the train tracks in the middle and just the general work ethic of, uh, of the group that is, that is building this. At this point in time, I do have confidence uh, in their work. Uh, and I truly believe that the KEV portion of the line will be the most reliable. But uh, as I said earlier, uh, you know, the proof's gotta be in the pudding on this one. Cause uh, you know, I, yeah. before I was elected, I heard a lot of city councilors very excited about phase one and you know, Look at the first couple Here of weeks of operation, right? Yeah, exactly. All right, let's uh, let's talk a little more about uh, about traffic and and traffic safety. A um, uh, couple of things. Obviously, there have been some road calming measures that have been put in place throughout the city. Uh, there's a there's a mentality that we need to slow cars down and and uh, especially on residential roads, of course, and mm -hmm. be more mindful of the risk. Uh, there also have been measures to during the coronavirus crisis open up roads uh, to pedestrians and make more space for pedestrians and people on skateboards and bicycles and and that sort of thing. What what's your feeling about where we stand on all of that? Well, speeding is a, is a major concern that residents uh, share with me uh, here in Orleans. Uh, regrettably, there's always going to be drivers who refuse to comply with safe driving practices no matter what measures we put in their way. Uh, police enforcement is the most effective tool uh, for discouraging uh, continuously aggressive drivers. The OPS continues to urge the residents submit traffic complaints so that they can assign their resources accordingly. They work on, on heat maps. So if they end up with, you know, 20 complaints in this area uh, and they've been patrolling over here, but they're not receiving complaints, they're able to move their resources uh, to these hot spots. So it's important that they use the online reporting tool or call 236-1222 um, to, to, to make those complaints. Um, so if anybody has any questions about how the OPS conducts enforcement here in, in Orleans, we've got a great community police officer, Mark LaRue. You can contact my office. I'll give you his contact information. Uh, when it comes to traffic calming, uh, I get a budget of $50,000 a year. And I was uh, chatting uh, last week uh, with one of our traffic calming experts. And he let me know that uh, we spend almost to the penny uh, every single bit of that allotment. Um, so that's for things like flex stakes, speed boards that collect data. Uh, this is something that I take very seriously. We also have a second program uh, for neighborhood traffic calming, which is like permanent traffic calming measures. Uh, so construction has started on uh, Rue Amiens, 
Uh, MEA is used uh, as a conduit for residents of Fallingbrook and Queenswood Heights uh, to get to the 174. So to help with community safety, construction for permanent traffic calming measures has started. So this is going to include, include uh, raised crosswalks, bulbouts, pavement markings, and a notice of construction was sent out to residents. And we're hoping that this project will be completed uh, in uh, the spring of 2021. Uh, Bilberry is upcoming as well. So the City of Ottawa conducted a neighborhood traffic calming study along the entire length of Bilberry Drive uh, between the dead end at John Dark Boulevard North uh, and the east intersection. So uh, due to concerns about speeding, pedestrian safety and aggressive driving behavior, there's a park along there, Joe Jameson, uh, a church uh, and uh, St. Matt's High School best high school in Ottawa, go Tigers, I went there. Uh, so the purpose of the neighborhood traffic calming study is to address uh, community uh, concerns related to traffic on existing streets. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, we, we work really hard on this. It's uh, something that, uh, that we take very seriously. Yeah. Two new traffic uh, cameras uh, in, in Orleans as well, uh, one up on, on Innes Road uh, and another across from St. Francis of Assisi. So it's something that the chair of the Transit Commission, or sorry, uh, uh, the um, Transportation uh, Committee and I, uh, Tim Tierney, have been working on quite closely. All right, Matt, we only have a couple of minutes left, but uh, this, there are still many important decisions that are happening at Ottawa City Hall, including around uh, the ward boundaries. Uh, there are some big planning decisions that are being made as well. So uh, how can people still continue to engage and stay in touch and, and know what's going on with all of this in this unusual time? Yeah, so there's there's quite a bit uh, of uh, engagement opportunities ongoing right now at Engage Ottawa. Uh, as you mentioned, the ward boundary review, uh, which now has a sixth option that keeps Queenswood Heights and Fallingbrook in, in its entirety in the same ward, which is what I was advocating for. So very pleased to see that. Uh, our energy evolution plan, our bike parking strategy, our stage two station naming. Uh, so we're naming all the stations. So I've got four of them uh, in my ward under the current boundaries. So still lots of opportunity to engage so they can reach out to, to me at uh, matt.luloff at ottawa.ca uh, or uh, they can uh, go visit the Engage Ottawa website uh, and engage on on all of these uh, really incredible projects that uh, that we're working on. All right, Matt, I really appreciate you joining us today, and uh, and I know you're you're managing a lot from from home uh, from your workspace there, especially with a with a young child at home, uh, like so many of us, uh, it's been a challenging uh, juggling act over the last six months or so. Um, so I'm sure your residents will continue to engage with you through traditional and non-traditional ways, but we wanted to give you the opportunity to, to speak directly to them today. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. You know, every day I'm thankful and and humbled by the trust that was placed in me uh, to be the Councillor for Orleans. So even with our offices physically closed, we're available uh, at matt.lulaf.ottawa.ca or 580-2471. So thanks, Mark, for this right opportunity, on. and thanks to, to the entire Rogers team. Matt Luloff from Ward 1 Orleans. Thank you for watching.